Hi guys, this video is just the first of the kinematic series which is going to explain just how to build a basic model. And here the basic model that we're building is going to be trying to predict the position of an object, in this case a little car, at some time in the future. And remember, a model is just a graph or an equation for our class. It can also be a computer program and there's many other things that can actually serve as models. But the model is like the machine that you're going to put information in and it's going to crank out the whatever you want, in this case, the position of the object. So like we did in class, the first thing we need to do is we need to plan out what we want to be our input and what we want it to predict, also known as the output. And then we have to figure out all the things that might affect the output so that we can build our model. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here we have the model diagram. Remember, the model is like the machine, like that box. And then we have an input and an output variable. Now, the output, of course, is going to be position because that's what we want to actually be able to solve for. Right, that's what we're trying to predict. We want the, the machine, the model, to spit out position, a final position of the car at a given time. So we want to be able to put a time in to our model and we want the time to be able to crank out a position. Now that's going to depend on several things. So we listed what are things that can affect the position of the car in the future. And you guys did a good job of saying, well, the speed could affect it, how fast the car is going, um, what direction it's traveling in, which would be very important, right? Because we don't want to, if it's traveling west, we don't want to aim east if we're trying to locate it, right? And then also where it started from, so the starting position, also known as the initial position. Okay, so I'm going to put I and T here in parentheses for the initial position. All right, so we have this down. Now, an important thing to remember is that the input variable is the horizontal axis, so it's the X variable, right? And the output variable is on the y-axis. It's better to write dependent and independent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo those and I'm going to write it in again. But I'm going to write it in as independent. It's my independent variable. And this is my dependent variable. And the dependent variable depends on the independent variable is what we're thinking here, right? So we were thinking, does position depend on time? Well, it does, right? If a car is moving, where it is in the future depends on how long it's been moving for. So that it does depend on it, and we just have to figure out how. So at this point, we've got our variables laid out. We've got our input variable, which is time, our in independent variable, and our dependent or output variable, which is position. The next thing in the process is we actually have to collect some data. Just like anything, if I'm trying to track a pattern, I have to keep record of what the individual parts of the pattern are. And if I can see a trend or a pattern, then I'm better able to make a prediction. So the trick is that you're always going to collect the position and the time data. So I'm going to collect this and this information. So we're going to do a lab to actually collect that data. You don't really have to collect any other data right now except for those two things. Now the constants, you can write those down, but for us, they're exactly what it says, constant. They're not going to change. So we could try to figure out the speed. We can visually see the direction of the car, and we can note its starting position. So all those things can be done. But our main data that we're going to collect is actually the position and the time data. So let's do that. All right, so here we used video analysis software instead of doing it um, in sort of real, with real materials. So uh, let's take a look. If you want to watch that little video, the cars move along, okay, both in this direction. Notice they're moving to the left. So I'm going to make note of that. And they're starting on the right-hand frame of the video. But... There, we have to set where zero is. Remember, zero is an arbitrary place. Now, it just so happens that this video has set zero right here on the edge of the video frame. Now, what does that even mean? 
It's just saying pick a reference point. Pick a reference point so that you can tell me where the car started. So if that's the reference point, then you can say, oh, the car started at this position. And then you can tell me they started 1.5 meters to the right of the position, for example, or 2.8 meters to the right of the, the um, zero position. So it's just a reference point, okay, and you set that. Now we're going to collect for data, and remember, we're looking for a pattern, and we're tracking the input and the output variables. So basically what I have to do at every second that passes, I have to write, okay, I'm going to keep track of the seconds so this is going to actually be time over here and I want to know what position it's at at every time okay so at one second when one second has passed when two seconds have passed when three seconds have passed when four and so on okay and so in the video we track that and we would write down the position marker from zero wherever it is at every second. So after one second it's here, after the next second it's here, after the next second it's here, after the next second it's here, and so on and so forth. And we'd write down those values. All right, we'd write them over here. Now we already have data from class, so we're going to use that data instead of this data, and I'm gonna sketch up the graph that we got from class. All right, so here we have our blank graph and remember our independent variable is time so that always goes on the independent axis and I'm gonna write what units I use so people have a, an idea of the scope of this right so that's time in seconds and over here on this axis I'm gonna use position alright and that's gonna be in meters and then the title for my graph will always be the dependent versus the independent so this is gonna be a position versus time graph all right and if you remember correctly the graph came out looking we had some data points that kind of descended this way sort of in an equal fashion so very consistent okay and at this point what we're going to do is we're going to note some things about it we have to pick what shape it is. Well, for math, we know that this shape, we call this shape um, a linear shape because the slope, right, is consistent. It's constant. It's not changing. So that means that this is a straight line, basically. I'm going to kind of sketch that in here. There's my trend line, okay? So that's telling me that the data was uh, collected, and when I put it on the graph, Every second that passed, the car moved the same amount of distance. So it, it increased its position by the same amount. So we could track these are the seconds down here, right? So every point there has has a, um, a time value. Sorry, some of these are not coming out here, all right? And every point also is made up of a position value. And we go all the way up. Now, the corresponding zero place on this graph is right here. That's at zero time, zero seconds. But where at zero seconds, where was the car? Did it start at that arbitrary zero place? No, because remember, the car started on the right-hand side of the video, and the zero place, which is totally arbitrary, you can put it wherever you want um, when you make the video. And if the program provided the video, they had already selected that location. So it started right here at this place right there. That's the first position point when time is zero. That's also known as the y-intercept, right? Um, we can see it eventually reach zero right here, which is true because after a certain number of seconds in the video, it reached the edge of the frame, which meant that it had reached the, um, the zero location because that's where they put the zero location. Now the fact that the slope is constant is very significant here, right? So at any time value I pick, let's say this is one, two, three, four, at four seconds, I can sketch a straight line up, hit the function, hit the line, and right there, if I scoot over to the left, I can say that's the position it's gonna be at, at four seconds, right? So every one of these points is a time 
comma position value so it's saying at time whatever four seconds three seconds whatever you pick it's going to be at this position based on the point that you picked that is the trend right that's what we're seeing happen here so let's try to write a function now all right so some people think this is a mystery but it's literally okay from my past experience i know that a graph that has a linear shape which could be positive or negative in our case it looked like this we know that that corresponds with this mathematical expression y equals mx plus b that is a name that is associated with that picture just like you learned animals right when you were a little kid or shapes you knew oh this one that has you know this shape that has uh, parallel sides and they're all the same length that I'm going to call that a square, right? This is the name of that function, y equals mx plus b. That is the model. Now we're just going to use that model, right? So we're going to come up with a um, specific uh, model from this generic one. So the first thing we have to do is we have to look at, well, what did we label the independent and dependent variables? This was time and this was position. So what I need to do is I need to replace the variables that I have in my equation. But I think before I do that, I'm actually going to calculate the slope. So for some people who are confused about how to do that, this is the time to do that. And we're going to figure out where is this thing, the y-intercept. Okay. Uh, so let's figure out the slope first. The slope is defined as how much the y variable changes. Now I'm going to write it as dependent, delta dependent, how much the dependent variable changes over how much the independent variable changes. All right, so it's just a ratio of those two changes. And if the change is the same every increment, um, then it's, it's going to form this kind of graph, a linear graph. Okay, so the change in the dependent, change in the independent. Well, how do you figure out change? Well, let's say, how, how do I figure out how much your height has changed since you were three years old? Well, I could measure your height now, and I could have recorded your height at three years old, and subtract those, and I would be able to tell you the difference or the change in your height. So basically what I need to do is I need to pick a dependent variable. So I'm going to write D, dependent variable in the future, Okay, so let's say, like the more recent one, let's say it's um, dependent variable 2. And I have to subtract it from the first one. And then I'm going to do the same for the independent. I'm going to say the independent variable that corresponds with that dependent variable. And I'm going to subtract 1 from the past. Sorry, that should be a 1. Okay, so what I need to do here is I am going to pick an independent dependent pair, which is just the ordered pair. And I'm going to pick another independent dependent pair. Remember, a time position, time position. And I'm going to subtract the positions and divide it by the difference in the times. So it's literally all I'm doing with the slope. It's just measuring the change in the one over the change in the other. That's it. Nothing else. All right. So let's actually physically do that. OK, so for my graph, I have to pick two points. So I'm going to pick always the y-intercept point because I know that the x is 0 there, or I guess the time is 0 there in our case, the independent variable is 0. And I'm going to pick another spot. So I'm going to pick this random spot right here. Now, obviously, this is a sketch, but I'm looking at my actual graph with numbers here on, that you can't see. And I'm going to pick those two points. <clears throat> so this top point is 0, 2.168. All right. And that means that at zero seconds, so when the video first starts, the car was 2.168 meters away from some rando, random zero place. Remember, that was the left-hand side of the screen. So they said it started 2.168 meters all the way to the right. <clears throat> and then I arbitrarily picked this point, which at 1.5 seconds, the car has is at the one meter mark. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the top of my equation, which is d2 minus d1, so position 2 minus position 1. So that's going to be 1 minus 
one six eight divided by independent variable two minus independent variable one. That's just the change in the time. So the time here minus the time here. So that's one point five minus zero. So you can see the distance change. Uh, let's see what that would be. That's going to be negative 1.168. So that's how far you moved, really. That's the change in your position. Divided by the change in time, which is just 1.5. And that, that comes out to be um, 0.77. So negative 0.77. Seven. Okay, so now let's figure out what the heck that even means. Okay, so we found the slope here. We found the change. All right, so I just found the slope, and I'm going to write in here um, y equals mx plus b, and I'm going to plug in the slope value now, which I just found was negative point seven seven x plus b. Now I need to plug in the y-intercept and if I go back to that graph which unfortunately I can't do on this program um, remember it was up here and I think it was 0 comma 2.168 alright so I'm gonna plug in 2.168 for b so it becomes y equals negative 0.77 x plus 2.168. So I'm slowly morphing this equation from something generic, which you see up here, to something more specific. The last thing I'm going to do is replace y and x with the variables in my experiment, <clears throat> which are the y variable is actually position, which I'm using an x to represent that, and the x variable, or the independent variable, is actually going to be a t. So I'm going to put that plus 2.168. And there you have it, the very bottom of the screen, which is a little frustrating to read, so I apologize for that. It says x equals, so the final position equals negative 0.77t plus 2.168. And remember that the change of the position as time change, we define that as the speed. Right, and then we talked about as well that this negative sign actually indicates the direction. So now I have a model that I can actually use, and I have a short, uh, quick second video that just does like one practice problem and kind of shows you how to use the model. So you can go to that if now if you want to, or you can stay tuned for the next slide here. With is going to replace all the variables and talk about their physical meaning, which we just did. So instead of y, I'm changing that to position, which we use in physics in x. Instead of m, I'm going to change that to velocity, like we just said. Instead of x, I'm going to change that to time. And instead of b, or as I was writing in class, y initial, I'm going to change that to x initial because that is the starting position. So here I have, and you might want to write these down for yourself, I have starting position, I mean final position equals velocity times time plus initial position. So basically what I plug in here is I started here, my car began at this location, and it started moving at this specific speed and at any given time t if I just plug in a number for t I can calculate its final position then if I want to figure out how far it actually moved well I take its final position x and I'm gonna write this up top here and I subtract its initial position and that tells me how far it actually moved so it's time to test the model and that is going to be in the next little video that's very, very short. This one will be a little bit longer, but you can skip around to the parts that you actually need. Um, and let me know if you need any more help.